Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to another day, of course, at 2020 Previews. We're going to talk about all the cards that were revealed over the course of the weekend. Not a lot to talk about, but we do get our last couple mythics here. As always, the sources are in the description below if you're curious. Also, if you're trying to pick up any singles or a booster box for a course at 2020, they do have them at FlipSideGaming.com. If you use that Heroes promo code, you can save a little cash while you support the channel. Always appreciate it. With that out of the way, let's get into it. We're going to begin with the final Cavalier. This is Cavalier of Squall, and it is a Korean language preview. So, this is a good card on paper, don't get me wrong. But it's just really in a bad meta when it enters standard. Here's the problem. First off, it's got a lot of competition. I mean, this thing does a lot. It's a 5-5 five, five for 5 with flying. When it enters the battlefield, you brainstorm. I mean, that can't be bad, right? When it dies, you get to shuffle it back into your deck, and you get to scry 2. There's a lot happening here, but am I going to play this over Kefnet? Am I going to play this over Hydroid Crisis in some decks? And worse yet, if this translation is correct and that Brainstorm is not a May ability, if Narset's on the battlefield, I can't really play this thing because I'm not going to draw the three cards, but I still have to put two cards on top of my deck. That's not going to feel good. So Narset alone just simply hoses this card. Yeah, this is just the wrong time and the wrong place for this. Even after rotation, all the cards I just mentioned are sticking around, so I don't really know where this is going to fit in when it comes to standard. Now, in limited, it's still a bomb. Like I said, there's a lot happening for just five mana here. As long as you're comfortable casting it with the three blue and the casting cost, go for it. It will be phenomenal for you, no doubt. Singleton formats like Commander, it's a solid blue creature. It's got evasion. It's an elemental knight, too. Maybe that will come into play. So I do think some decks will play it there. Ultimately, though, it's a good card. It just doesn't feel like it's in the right time and place. Blood-soaked altar. Okay, I'm not really feeling this one for standard. First off, it's very expensive for what it's doing here. Six casting cost. Once it's out, it takes more of your resources to get a 5-5 black demon creature token with flying. Now, that's great if you can get it. But remember, tokens are going to be a little more fragile. They can be bounced and such. Now, how do you get it? Well, you have to tap this thing. Pay two life. That's not too bad. Discard a card, which doesn't always have to be a drawback. Sometimes you can get some kind of advantage by putting something in your graveyard. Then sacrifice a creature. Again, not always a drawback. Sometimes, like in an Aristocrats deck, that can be okay. So all those things have to line up in your favor for this card to be good. Plus, you paid six for it. That doesn't feel great. So if you don't have any tricks, you just paid six mana, gave up two life, discarded another card, sacrificed a creature, gave up board presence to get a 5-5 five, five flying token, which hopefully nobody's playing with Callistus Missile. Now, 5-5 five, five tokens could be good if you could protect them, sure. Limited, it could be good for you there. If you're in a long, drawn-out game, a big board stall, then, yeah, you know what? You can sacrifice some small creature that's not doing a whole lot. Pay the two life. Hopefully you can afford to do that. Discard a land that maybe you just don't need at that point and make a 5-5 five, five flyer. Maybe that's good enough for you to get by the board stall and take the game. Yeah, it's definitely playable there, but sometimes you might have better, more consistent things when you're talking six casting cost. You could have just some huge bomb creature that you might play instead. When it comes to Commander or any Singleton format, this could be okay. It just depends on what your deck's trying to do, if it's worth your time. Maybe a Demon deck, maybe an Aristocrats deck, maybe a Reanimation deck. Perhaps there's a deck that's trying to do all of those things combined. Well, then this would be perfect there. Here's a Korean language preview, Gargos Vicious Warden. Now let's talk Limited first here. Compare this six converted mana cost card with the last one. Granted, this one is three on color, three green and three. But still, big difference, right? Now, also, I realize the other one was an uncommon. This one is a rare. But still, when you talk about the economy here, this is far, far better. You're going to have a threat immediately for your mana. You don't have to sink any other time or resources into it. It's an 8-7. It doesn't have trample. It doesn't have evasion. But it has vigilance. Seems a little odd for such a large creature. But again, you would have to pay more, I think, if this had trample. Hydra spells, you cast, cost four less to cast. Maybe that rarely comes into play for Drafter Sealed, but we know there's at least one other Hydra in the set that we saw earlier in the week. Every time a creature you control becomes a target of a spell, this will fight up to one target creature you don't control. So now think of it this way. It doesn't say where the spell's coming from, at least not in this translation. I'm assuming that's correct. But if I go ahead and play a combat trick on one of my creatures, well, this is going to fight. That's pretty cool. 
If my opponent has to get rid of one of my creatures, including this one, they target it with spout removal, I'm going to get something of theirs most likely. So it is just going to kind of tighten the game up a little bit. Your opponent's going to start losing options as soon as this thing hits the battlefield. And even though, like I said, it doesn't have trample, this is still a big creature, especially if you got it out on turn five or turn six. Is this good enough for standard? No, I think it's a little too expensive for what it is. There, the lack of trample or evasion is going to be a problem. This can be chump blocked. It could be taken out by a lot of things before you can really get it going, considering it's coming out a little bit later in the game. Now, maybe a deck could ramp into it, but there's a lot of really good ramp targets now. I don't know if I'm going to choose this one currently in the standard format. The last ability could still be good against some matchups, but not as good against other ones. And Commander is where this is going to shine. You could make this your Commander and go for a Mono Green Hydra build, or you could throw it into an existing build that has a lot of Hydras, get an Unbound Flourishing from Modern Horizons, and there you go, call it a day. Here's the final Planeswalker, Vivian Arcbow Ranger, and this one's okay. Here's what I like and here's what I don't like. The thing I don't like the most about it is the plus one and the minus three don't really do anything unless you have a creature. So distribute two plus one plus one counters among up to two creatures. They gain trample until end of turn. That could be good if you have a big dumb creature that can't get by for some reason. But just putting plus one plus one counters on something is very good. We've seen that with a Johnny Adversary of Tyrants recently. So that's all right. The minus three target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature or planeswalker. So it's not a fight. It just does damage. Again, that's good and could help protect the card, but you need a creature in play already. It's not giving you a creature necessarily. Now the minus five doesn't take a long time to get to. It starts off at four plus one, and then the next turn you could do this, but it is a wish spell. So you can go grab a creature out of the sideboard. And there's a lot of good options that exist right now in standard. You could go with Carnage Tyrant, Thrashing Brontodon, Reclamation Sage, Knight of Autumn, Deputy of Detention. A lot of good creatures that you could just have one ofs in the board. Because of that, I do think this could see some standard play. First glance, I would say, you know what, I'm just going to use a Johnny Adversary of Tyrants, but you know, a Johnny is going to rotate out this fall. But regardless, this does bring some things to the table that a Johnny doesn't, and I think it could show up in some token builds, maybe alongside a Johnny. Then post rotation, it could take a bigger role, assuming that archetype is still successful. Limited, it should be a bomb, being a Mythic Planeswalker, and it is. It will be amazing there, as long as you're comfortable casting it for the three green in the casting cost. Then for singleton formats, Oathbreaker, Commander, yeah, could be good. Oathbreaker, you could try to build around this if you wanted to. This will be stronger, of course, and maybe go wide decks, token builds, builds where you have a lot of big creatures that maybe don't have trample, don't have evasion for some reason. Yeah, there's definitely some decks that will throw this in. All right, those are the preview cards for today. We're going to come back tomorrow and we're going to do it all over again. We'll recap and analyze the cards that come out over the next 24 hours. But until then, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon and have a great day.